Hey, what's up guys and girls? It's me, your host, M. Kwan. You're going to get fed up with me here with another video um, related to WWDC and the keynote event that took place. So, you've got a massive iPad in front of you and the reason that we have a big iPad is because we're going to be looking into one of the key announcements of WWDC uh, keynote event and that was the announcement of iOS 6. Now, um, the MacBook got a lot of cover, uh, the Retina Display MacBook. But in my opinion, one of the biggest announcements was iOS 6. And the reason it's the most, you know, the, the biggest announcement is that it affects the most people. And that's because more people use iOS devices and, you know, will hopefully be looking at upgrading to iOS 6 than, you know, the, the, the people that deal with the Mac uh, uh, sector of, of Apple's products. And what I want to do is I want to run through some of the features because we have iOS 6 on this device and we managed to get our hands on this because we have a developer account and um, it's not uh, available for general public use and there's good reasons for that because it's still in uh, in a beta or beta version there are bugs in there it's not a finished product so that's something that you have to be aware of but what I want to do is spend a few minutes going through some of what I think are the key features of iOS 6 and this is going to be on an iPad um, so there are some features that will be missing from this and and more applicable to the iPhone so the first thing is this this is a third generation iPad okay but check this out hey Siri what's up Hi, the big man. <laughs> he knows who he's talking to yes the first major addition to iOS 6 uh, particularly if you own the new iPad is going to be this Siri. Siri has uh, been included in iOS 6. My understanding is that um, Siri will, however, not work with um, certain versions of of devices. Um, we understand that iPhone 4 is not going to have Siri. We also understand that the iPad 2 will not have Siri. So, in in, in essence, Siri in that kind of responsive uh, version is only going to work with the iPhone 4S, which you already have, um, and it's also going to work with the new iPad. Now, a couple of key things that Siri can do. Launch TweetBot. It will now um, allow you to actually launch apps directly from Siri. This is something that was, you know, critically missing from the original, uh, uh, you know, Siri lineup. And this is something that's changed. So that's one of the things it will do. It's also supposed to be smarter about sports. And this was demoed at the event. Um, and so it can pull in scores, game summaries, all that player statistics, whatever you need on that front. That's something that would be included. They also demoed it using Yelp, OpenTable uh, for booking, restaurant reviews, re reservations, all that stuff, as well as, um, you know, integrated with Rotten Tomatoes for movies and reviews. So... This is something that we tested and it seemed to work. Is Harry Potter a good movie? I found a few movies matching Harry Potter. So, you know, it's kind of looked this up based on Rotten Tomatoes and also um, some of the trailers that we found earlier on played through um, the iTrailer app as well. The sports we just haven't got working whatsoever. So that's something that, you know, we can't demo in this. So that's where Siri has come in. The other things are just simple improvements to Siri uh, in terms of responses and so on and so forth. We've actually found Siri to be really, really good on the iPad. It's, it's worked really, really well. So, you know, if that's anything to go by, then hopefully the final version of iOS 6 should be good when it comes to Siri. Now, the other thing is, um, the other important thing to talk about here is going to be more social integration and we're talking particularly about Facebook because once you log in now um, on the back end uh, you log into Twitter and Facebook you're able to share things quicker and, and I'm going to demo this and then we'll talk about Safari which is the app that we're in so things like for example you know here's a website Mquan gear right this is one of our sites that we run I want to share this with someone because it's a really cool site so I click this uh, share button and in the past you know there were very limited options well now we can go to Twitter and Facebook integration you log in once and that's all you need to do you can share it di directly to Facebook through that avenue let's just go into photos 
Um, let's go to camera roll and show you this image here, or that one here rather. This is our wallpaper. Want to share this? You can see you can share it again to Facebook or Twitter, and it works, you know, perfectly fine um, when it comes to that. So that's another key feature that it will work with. The other thing we were at Safari, so let me just show you Safari. Safari um, is interesting because it hasn't changed so much. A couple of key things that may be different. One is on the iPhone we've seen, Safari is different. You get an option in the landscape mode only to view um, you know, full screen. You don't necessarily need that with the iPad. So that's something that is missing on the iPad, not that it makes a difference. Uh, but some of the new features are things like iCloud tabs. Now iCloud tabs will mean that you've got an iPhone, you've got an iPod Touch perhaps, you've got an iPad, and you've also got Mac. Uh, running OS X um, uh, Mountain Lion. One of the things you'll be able to do is go to the tabs that are open on any of these devices and browse from there. It's been a big pet peeve, and I suppose that's a big feature of the cloud integration in the new iOS 6. So that's something that we can see over there. Other than that, really, you know, Safari is really the plain old. It's not been anything majorly different for us to caught our attention. The other big thing or the big change has come to mail. Now I like the changes to mail because only a couple of days ago I was cursing and blinding Apple for the fact that they made dealing with emails unbelievably difficult. I have a number of email uh, accounts and a lot of those email accounts um, are very necessary. Now if I want to flag up an email it was really difficult in the current version of iOS but with iOS 6 you can actually flag things up so it just makes getting you know sorting important emails out a lot more easier. You've also got this VIP section and you can set certain mailboxes um, and email addresses to come directly into VIP. These are important people like your boss, you know, um, the, the Illuminati, you know, Barack Obama, whoever it is, they'll come straight into VIP and you know what you're getting. The other small change, check the graphic out just to pull down to refresh. That's been included in there. Yeah, you know, minor changes. I mean, it's nothing major, major, but that's mail there for you. The other thing is we've had an addition of the Clock app and the Clock app really is very, very nice. We understand that when the original iPad was released, Steve Jobs wasn't happy about the Clock app. And for that reason, it, it, it didn't get included. So they've obviously figured this out, or, Teve, or Tim Cook rather and the team feel that it's good enough to include now. And it's a really nice, you know, simple addition. It, it's something that, in my opinion, should have been there in the first place. But hey, it's, it's all good. So this is something that you can do there. You can also, um, you know, add more sounds. And I understand on the iPhone, you can actually add uh, music tracks to an alarm clock. So that's an addition there. What else? Well, the other big thing that got a lot of oohs and ahs at the um, WWDC keynote event was this, Maps. Now, Maps is massive because on the back end, a lot of things have changed. We've had changes to um, where Apple gets the, 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 the mapping data from. They're no longer using Google Maps. And I said in my previous video, it's like a, a middle finger up to Google saying, we don't need you anymore. They've secured a new system, and what this does is it seems to work with third-party other, uh, it says here, data from TomTom and others, so it's obviously sourcing information from other sources. Now, a couple of key things, let's just show you around this really quickly. You can see here, one of the big features is this, 3D. Believe it or not, this wasn't working at all. Um, it's just started working recently, so I don't know if this is something, again, with the beta version, because it is a beta version, um, but look at the look at this. I mean, this is just like crazy. You know, you can go for you can go anywhere. I mean, we were searching Sydney Opera House. We were searching Big Ben. Um, this is Cupertino, and it's obviously shown that up really well now. And so some of the detail is phenomenal. It really is really good. Now the big killer thing, especially if you own an iPhone, is going to be this feature here: directions. Because directions will allow you to actually get turn by turn directions with Siri. Now that's a massive, massive deal. And um, you know, in our opinion, it's 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 a real game changer when it comes to the Maps app. Now it's gonna mean a lot for you if you use Maps a lot, but if you don't, like me, where I have a designated sat nav so I don't even need my iPad 
or the iPhone. So that's one of the new additions there. Or the other thing was, where the hell is Maps? There it is. You get a change in the icon there. So that's something that's changed slightly. So where's FaceTime? FaceTime over cellular. This is something that currently FaceTime is locked into the Wi-Fi. Uh, so you've got to be on Wi-Fi to kind of use FaceTime. But now this will be uh, applicable over cellular network. I don't know what that's going to do to people's data charges and battery life. But hey, you know, if that excites you, then well done. Um, and that's it really. Now, I've installed this on, like I said, my new iPad. It's was installed around about four o'clock and it's still not downloaded all the apps granted I've got a lot of apps but majority of third-party apps seem to work perfectly fine uh, it's going into landscape so I mean I've been these are some of the apps that I use the most um, they work perfectly fine I've not had any issues what do I think about it well here's the thing it, in terms of an OS bump. I wouldn't class this as, an, as a massive OS bump. This is more like uh, iOS 5.2 really than it is iOS 6. There are some major changes on the back end when it comes to cloud elements or iCloud elements of the iOS and I think those are really good. But I'm a little concerned that a lot of people are going to find the changes very minimal um, and, and that's something that I'm kind of feeling at the moment. I don't know. I'm not really sure how many our iOS fans are going to be like, hmm, I'm getting fed up of this. I'm going to move over to Android. But then again, it works. It's so functional. It's so universal now uh, that what will Apple do? What does Apple need to do in order to make people say, wow, that's revolutionary in the way that they did with the original iOS launch? So I don't know. Um, I've, I've got some mixed opinions about this at the moment. In terms of bugs, there are bugs in here. But, you know, it's it's overall a good uh, minimal upgrade, in my opinion. Anyway, if you've tried out iOS um, 6 beta, leave a comment down below. If you've got a video that you want a video response, feel free to do it. And we'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay geek. Peace and blessings.